Hey, what's up? It's Jared, the MTG Ninja. Today we're going to be talking about MTG Vegas. So a few weeks ago, me and my son were able to go down to Las Vegas and attend the MTG Vegas event, uh, an in-person event down in Vegas for Magic the Gathering. And honestly, it was a lot of fun. And so today I want to talk a little bit about the event and what we did there. This was my first big event in over 20 years. I think the last event that I went to was Pro Tour New York in 1999. And so it's been a little while for me um, since I've been to a big Magic the Gathering event. And for my son, my 12 year old son, this was his first in-person Magic the Gathering event ever. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the event from a newcomer's perspective. And then second, I wanna talk about earning prize ticks and competing in side events because that was one of the big goals that me and my son had going to this event was to not really take part in the main events but to enter a lot of the side events and try and earn as many prize ticks as we could and honestly we didn't know what prize ticks were before we learned about this event and so looking into it and um, finding out what kinds of cool prizes you could get from the prize wall. That was one of our goals going into the event was to grind through as many of the side events as we could and earn as many prize takes as we could. And by the end of the event, we had earned thousands of prize takes and were able to get some pretty cool things from the prize wall. And so I'll talk a little bit about earning prize takes and getting cool stuff from the prize wall as well. Just in case you might not know what MTG Vegas is, it's a Magic the Gathering event put on by Channel Fireball, which used to be known as GP Vegas or Grand Prix Vegas or maybe even Magic Fest Vegas. Anyways, it's a huge in-person Magic event where thousands of people from across the country and even from across the world come together to play Magic. So it's pretty cool. So the event, which was held in November, took place at the Las Vegas Convention Center, which is a really big venue that can hold thousands of people. And the event was basically three days full of Magic the Gathering tournaments. And there were two main events. The first was modern format, and it went Friday and Saturday. And the second main event was Crimson Vow Sealed, which went Saturday and Sunday. But during those three days, there are a ton of side events going on all the time. All different formats, sealed deck, standard, legacy, modern, draft, commander, popper, two-headed giant, you name it. And there's actually so much going on that for me, I had to really plan out the side events that we wanted to participate in so that we didn't miss anything. Like I mentioned before, me and my son's goal was to play in a lot of side events. And it's mostly because we didn't want to play in the main events or we couldn't play in the main events because we didn't have any modern decks and we didn't know much about Crimson Vow. And so we didn't think it was worth it to try and play in the main events. And I also didn't want to throw my son into a big main event like that for his first tournament. So our goal was to try and enter and play in as many of the side events as we could. And so at first we both signed up for the limited Fnatic packages uh, because we wanted to do um, some sealed deck and some booster drafts and we didn't really have any decks put together to play in any of the other tournaments. And so that's what we signed up for at first. But then in the weeks leading up to the event, I actually started looking into maybe um, building some decks. And I started off looking into modern, but that was super expensive and it looked kind of complicated to get some practice with. And so then I looked into standard and standard looked a little bit easier and a little bit cheaper to put some decks together. And so me and my son ended up putting together some quick aggro decks. I played mono white and he played mono green. And those were pretty easy for us to be able to build the decks and also get some practice with them before the tournament. And so we ended up playing in a couple of standard tournaments as well as the limited ones that we had signed up for. So as someone that hasn't ever been to a GP type event before, I think it was really cool. And there's a lot of things to get excited about with a big event like this. It's very similar to some of the big events that I had been to before, as far as like having vendors there where you can buy and sell cards, having artists uh, that sign cards and that have their prints for sale. And so that was really cool. Some of the new things, I guess, are, I guess they called it the command zone, where you play commander, 
and Commander wasn't a thing back in my day, and so that was something new for me. And that's cool. A lot of people were there in the command zone playing Commander. One of the other new things was the prize ticks, which I had to figure out beforehand before we went. But in general, it's just kind of like any sort of magic tournament, you know, just on a bigger scale. More people there, more tournaments happening, uh, more people to trade with, more vendors to buy and sell. But if you're a newcomer, kind of like uh, my son who's never been to a tournament before, it can seem a little bit intimidating. And so uh, some advice that I'd have for you is if you're gonna go to one of these events, try and find somebody to go with. So that way, if you have a friend that you can go to the event with and they've been to a tournament before, maybe they can help show you the ropes. And then you just have somebody to hang out with while you're there and to play magic with if you need to. So like I said, I went with my son, and so it was fun for us to enter tournaments together, and we did some of the sealed league games against each other, and it was just nice to be able to hang out and do some magic together. But while we were there, my dad, who lives in Vegas, also went with us for a couple of days. And since we were playing in a lot of the side events and he was selling some of his cards, sometimes he just didn't have anything to do and he had some free time. And so what he would do is he would go around and he'd trade with people, um, he'd go to the command zone and he'd learned how to play commander, and he just met people and he had fun playing magic. And I think that's the nice thing about an event like this. And this was my experience, was that the vast majority of the people there are just there to have fun and they're nice people. And so even if you end up going by yourself, I think you'll have a good time. And like I mentioned, one of the new things for me was the prize takes. And so if you play in any of the side events, if you win, then you get a certain amount of prize ticks. And the more you win, the more prize ticks you get. And then you can take those prize ticks that you've collected over to the prize wall, and that's where you can turn them in for prizes. And it's cool because at the prize wall, they have everything from little prizes, booster packs, deck boxes, sleeves, free cards, binders, stuff like that, all the way up to you can get booster boxes, you can get oversized cards that are about the, the size of a poster, you can get uncut sheets of magic cards, and so there's a lot of prizes that you can get there. And like I mentioned, my and my son's goal was to try and get as many of the prize ticks as we could, so that by hopefully Saturday or Sunday morning at the latest, we could turn them in for one of the bigger prizes. And we did a pretty good job of getting prize ticks. Um, we didn't do great in every single one of the tournaments, but we did good in some of them and we we're able to get enough prize ticks to get some of the big prizes that we wanted. So let me tell you the different side events that we entered. So on Friday, if I remember correctly, we played in the standard one tournament. I think that morning we just kind of went around a little bit, checked out the artists and looked at the vendors and just kind of tried to figure out what we were gonna do. And then we played in the standard one event first and we did pretty good my son won his first game and he was playing a mirror match and so i was proud of him his very first match in the tournament he ended up winning and then i ended up going 2-0 in my games and then i split uh, with the guy in the third round and so i went 2-0 and one in that and got some good prize ticks from that. And then later that day, instead of doing some sealed or limited events, we ended up doing another standard because we were kind of in the groove of playing standard. And so we did the standard double up event. And I think those two things were basically what we had time for on Friday. And we weren't trying to kill ourselves by staying super late and, and playing all day long. Then I think on Saturday, what we did was we started off by doing the sealed league in the morning. And the sealed league is nice because because you sign up for it and you go get your packs and make your deck and then during the day when you have time you can just go back to the sealed league area and you can find people to play and so it's just kind of on your own schedule and when you have free time so that was cool and then we also did I think the sealed double up that day which I think they were running a little bit late or a little bit over on the rounds and so it took more time than we thought it was going to take and so I think I ended up splitting on my last round uh, for that tournament as well, and ended up doing pretty good to getting a lot of prize ticks there as well. And then Sunday, we did the Sealed League again. We actually weren't planning on playing that much on Sunday. Uh, I was planning on just getting some of the artists to sign my cards and looking around at the vendors and doing some of that stuff that day, but we ended up joining the Sealed League on Sunday. 
and just to get our cards basically we joined the sealed double up and I don't think we did very well in that and so we just ended up kind of dropping out. So after I ended up getting a lot of my cards signed by the artists and, and doing some other stuff, uh, me and my son ended up entering just one more sealed event. We ended up doing a booster draft, a Crimson Vow booster draft. And I'm glad we did because it ended up going really well. And my son ended up going 2-0 and I ended up going 2-0. And so we ended up in the finals together and so we just split to get our prize ticks. And that was a really nice last event, especially for my son, where he was able to end on a high note, winning his first Magic tournament ever. And so that was really cool. So after doing all of those side events and adding up all of our prize ticks that we had earned, we were able to get some really cool prizes. Well, one of the things that I think we were most excited to get was an uncut sheet of foil cards from Midnight Hunt. Originally, I wasn't sure if I wanted one of them, but when we saw it in person, I was like, wow, that actually is really cool. And so we saved up our ticks and were able to get one of those. And that was somewhere over a thousand prize ticks. And then on top of that, we were able to get, I think, two booster boxes, um, a handful of other boosters. And so I think we got somewhere around 2,000 prize ticks total which was pretty good. I think we were just aiming for maybe getting around a thousand or 12 to 1400. And so we did better than we thought we were gonna do. And we came away with some really cool prizes. But yeah, so that was our experience at MTG Vegas. And hopefully this sheds a little bit of light on the event and kind of what we did there and what it's like for a newcomer and someone that's trying to earn prize ticks for the first time. If you guys have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments section below and I'll try to answer all of them that I can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.